This video demonstrates how to use the DEER Prototypes Energy Plus repository published by DNV and Sound Data. There is a suite of prototype models that were originally in DO2 format and they were recently converted by DNV to Energy Plus format. Currently only residential prototypes are available, but the plan is to expand this repository to include all of the residential and non-residential prototypes that were used in the original DEER database. So this is a public repository. You can access it at github.com slash sound dash data slash deer dash prototypes dash energy plus. If you're familiar with Git and GitHub, you can go ahead and clone this repository, um, create a branch, submit pull requests and all that. But if you just want to use it, you can click on code and download zip. And this will just download a zip archive of the current state I should also point out some of the publicly available resources on cedars.sound-data.com. If you go to Deer Resources, Tools, Energy Plus, there's a number of memos and meetings and other resources here. The most pertinent for this exercise is probably this Energy Plus Residential Prototype System December 21, 2022 webinar, which has a uh, PowerPoint presentation as well as a video recording of the webinar. This is a webinar hosted by DNV where they discuss the repository and how to use it and also how to post-process the results into the required database format for DEER. I'm not going to discuss the post-processing in this video, I'm just going to discuss how to run the currently available measures. So if you're interested in the post-processing, please take a look at this recording. So looking back at the repository, the readme file provides some useful information and lists the required software tools that we need to install before we can use the repository. So first we need to install Energy Plus version 9.5. We need to install ModelKit, which is a Ruby framework that I've discussed in previous videos. Note that this is a special version of ModelKit. It's referred to as ModelKit Flannel Edition, and this is actually different than the model kit that's available on Big Ladder's website. So be sure to install this specific version of model kit. There's also important instructions here for replacing a file that comes with the model kit installation um, with a file that's available in the repository under concurrency bug. We also need to install Python. This is kind of optional, but I'll show you where that comes into play. And then really all of this is optional if you just want to run the database. As I mentioned, you can, you can just download a zip archive. And if you're doing it that way, then you can disregard steps five through eight in this required tools and installation. How to use the modeling framework I'm going to cover in this video. And if you're interested in contributing to the project, there are some um, instructions on how to do that at the bottom of the readme file. So whether you've cloned the repository as I have, or you downloaded the zip archive and unzipped it, you should have a folder structure identical to this. I'm not going to talk about every single folder and every single file in here, um, but just the quickest way to run one of these measures or run some simulations is to click on analysis. These are all of the available measures and building types available right now. So there's DMO, which is double wide mobile home. There's multifamily MFM, and there are single family. There's a single story and a two story single family model. But probably the simplest example to demonstrate is the second from the top, the double wide mobile home ceiling installation. So if you click on that, we can see in each of these folders, there's an identical rake file. This repository could use some rearranging so that it could utilize a single rake file, a single cohorts, a single climates, um, and even a single codes file. But um, that's beyond the scope of this video. So if we click into this folder, we need to open a command window here. The easiest way to do this on Windows is to highlight the entire address bar, type CMD enter, and it will open a command window there. If you have Windows Terminal installed, you can right click and open terminal at that location. Um, either way, it doesn't really matter. So right now, these models are set up to run in every single climate zone. Um, so just to so just to limit the number of simulations that we're doing here, you can type a hashtag or pound symbol 
in column A, that will skip whatever row has that pound symbol. So in this case, I'll just simulate only climate zone 15, which is the hottest climate zone in California. Another important CSV file is this cohorts.csv, and this controls which prototypes are being simulated. So this entire folder is only utilizing the DMO or double wide mobile home prototype, but there's actually multiple DMO prototypes. There's the default one, which utilizes a gas furnace and DX cooling. There's a heat pump. There's a no cooling electric heat alternative and a no cooling gas furnace alternative. And again, you can place a hashtag or pound symbol in column A for all of the models that you don't want to simulate. But in this case, we'll just simulate all of these models. Another important file here is in cases. So there's a case file for each one of these cohorts. So the case file lists the parameters that will be changed for each instance of the model. So this case file is just for the DX gas furnace. So this is the first row in cohorts. And the case file has a number of different parameters listed here but we're actually only using the ceiling insulation layer thickness parameter. And if you don't list a parameter value, it's just going to use whatever default value is in the root file. Um, so for column C through I, this is just gonna use the default values for these parameters. And in column J, the first case is not specifying a value for the ceiling insulation layer thickness. Um, and then for all the other cases, it's increasing that insulation layer thickness by a certain amount to achieve this additional R values that are listed here. So this case is increasing the R value of the ceiling by, by R11. This case is increasing the ceiling insulation by R19, etc. And this parameter is being is changing the value in that root file. So if we just look quickly at the prototypes and go into DMO, and you can tell which prototypes this is using in the cohorts file here. So this is using DMO templates root. So templates root. And so we're looking for ceiling insulation layer thickness. And we can see the default is essentially zero. Um, and so that's what it will do for this first case. The case name is arbitrary, but you can see how it's helpful to label these. So the first case is R value by climate zone. So this means that it's actually varying the ceiling insulation based on the climate zone. And that's achieved in cohorts where there are these special formulas that are looking up a parameter value in the codes file. So this is looking up in this case, the ceiling console insulation thickness and a number of other parameters. And these will all change by climate zone because you can see in the lookup, we're looking up this table and it's using the ASHRAE climate. And the climate zones are in this climate CSV that we showed earlier. So this is the climate zone. This is the ASHRAE climate value that it's looking up so you can specify something different than column B but typically column B and column E are identical and then it, this is the codes file that it's using dear DMO 1972 to 1975 so if we look in the root directory under codes dear DMO 1972 to 1985 these are the tables that it's looking up. So this is a table for res key prototype values, climate zone CZ01. And you'll notice this lookup formula here is looking up res key prototype values, climate zone, and then the ASHRAE climate zone. And it's looking for the ceiling console layer conductivity and the value column. So it's looking for ceiling console conductivity, and it's looking at the value column. So that's column B. So it'll use this value for this parameter in climate zone one. That's how you can easily vary climate zone specific parameters based on a codes file. But other parameters we may want to specify as the same value for all climate zones. And that's what the case file is being used for. 
So the first case is varying the R value by climate zone, and it's still varying the R value by climate zone for these rows too, but it's also specifying this additional uh, insulation layer thickness between R11 and R60. So anyways, if we want to run all of these cases, and again, there's a case file for each cohort listed here, and you can see they're named identically in the cohorts CSV and the cases.csv. So it will run each of these cases for each of these cohorts. So if we want to run this now, we go to our command window and simply type model kit rake. So in previous versions of model kit, there were separate commands for generating cases, for composing the file, and then for running the IDF. In this newer version of model kit flannel, it handles that all in one command. So we just type model kit rake it identifies which cases have not been created yet. It writes those cases. And again, we're only running this for climate zone uh, 15 because we specified to run it only in climate zone 15 here. And then it composed those models and now it's running those models eight at a time. And we can see as some of the models complete the simulation, the others start composing and running automatically. So once the simulation is complete, it processes some results files and also shows the elapsed time. So it took almost seven minutes just to run the cases for that one prototype model in a single climate zone. So you can see why you might want to limit the climate zones or prototypes that you want to run. So looking back at our analysis folder for DMO ceiling insulation, there's now these three results files that were generated from the simulations. Um, unfortunately, the electric and gas um, profile CSVs are not being generated uh, correctly right now, but the results summary is a useful summary file for looking at the results of all the simulations. So the first table here just lists the site EUI, the source EUI, the total energy in kilowatt hours, and net source energy in kilowatt hours. And then the next table has a number of end use results. So total KWH, heating KWH, cooling KWH, et cetera. Um, and then the last table here is the unmet cooling and heating hours. So the way that you can change what is presented in this summary file is in this query.txt. This is a text file that ModelKit uses to perform SQL queries on the results SQL files. Um, if you look in one of these runs folders, there is this instance dash out dot SQL. So this is the database file that model kit is querying for each of these folders to generate in, in combination with this query dot text to generate this result summary. The query dot text I covered in a previous video, um, but basically it's querying this SQL file, um, an easier, more human readable way of finding the same information is to look at the HTM and you can see how these query lines match up with the reports in this HTM. So annual building utility performance summary, annual building utility performance summary, entire site, site and source energy so entire facility site and source energy and we're querying energy per total building area energy per total building area net site energy net site energy so it's querying this value but from the sql database file just to give you an idea of how you can change this query.txt and customize the result summary if you want so if we want to add an additional measure that's not pre-configured here um, the easiest way to do that is to add another row in the case file. So again, these are in the analysis folder. And if we're doing the DMO ceiling installation, we'd go into cases. And in one of these case files, we can just add another row. Again, the case name is arbitrary, but keeping consistency with the previous cases, we'll just call this one R add R68. 
So if we want to add an additional R8, we can just look at the difference in thickness between these two layers, 0.061. So we can do this thickness plus 0.061 and just only paste the value there, get rid of this. And so now we have this additional measure that's adding R68 to the ceiling insulation. So if you go back to the command window, we can just do that same command model kit rake and it will see that we only have one additional case. So it's just composing that one case and running it. Now you can obviously have much more complex cases than simply adding more insulation, which is just increasing the insulation layer thickness. Some measures may require additional templates being added. For example, if you wanted to simulate a different HVAC system in one of these prototypes, that would be a little more advanced and would require a little bit more experience with model kit and creating templates. So I'm not going to cover that in this video, but maybe in a future video I can cover adding a more complex HVAC measure. One thing I forgot to mention is the Python script that you can use to run all of the models and measures. So we just showed how to run all the measures for the DMO ceiling insulation prototype. But if you wanted to run all the measures in all of these folders, which would take quite a bit of time, because remember it took about seven minutes to run just the measures for that one building in one climate zone. But if you wanted to just run all of the prototypes, um, that's where this Python script comes in. Um, in the scripts folder, you can run this automating runs.py. And if you do that, this is where you need Python installed. And you would just type Python automating runs.py, hit enter. And so right now it's running the first measure, which is or the first building and the first measure, which is the brushless fan motor. And then it will move on to the ceiling insulation. And once we get into the multifamily models, those take quite a bit longer to run. So uh, I would imagine if we were to run this script to completion, it would take probably over 24 hours to run all the models, although I haven't done it myself. To get out of this, you can type control C in Windows a couple times and it will kill that process. Like I said, I haven't actually used this myself other than just to test it out. But if you do want to run all the measures and all the building types, um, you can use that Python script to do that. The other scripts in there are related to the data transformation. And like I mentioned, there's a whole process for post processing the results into the format required for the DEER database, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. So thanks for watching and please let me know if you find this video helpful or if you have other topics that you'd like me to cover. Thanks.